Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, 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 Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy. Hey everyone, Steve Red is easy. What's the odds? Uh, I'm joined. Lucas, Brendan, of course. We're here. We're back. We don't know where we've been, uh, but you miss us, and I know it because some people actually wrote me and said, "Are you dead? Um, is it over for you?" And so, no. Unfortunately for you, I'm not dead. I'm still here doing the podcast, enjoying my summer. I hope you guys are too. Uh, today the weather is crappy, so we were just talking about getting into what we're watching and I've been plowing through the Netflix quarterback series, uh, which by the way, I'm not even really good at, I'm not, there's no spoiler alerts to what Kansas city won the super bowl last year. Did you not know that? If you didn't know that, then this is not for you. So, uh, and you know, look, I, I'm a sucker. I don't know you guys, how you guys feel, but I, I love these sports documentaries. I pretty much when when Hard Knocks was going on on HBO and then it turned into like 24-7 with the boxing. I don't know if you guys ever watched that on HBO, but like you know, they used to follow around Pacquiao and Mayweather and stuff. I got completely roped in. Then the 30 for 30s just blew everything away as far as like half hours and, and you know, making them into like legitimately like their own standalone docs. But this, like, now Netflix figuring out what how they're going to handle it. They've done some, like, Last Chance You to Me holds up to, and I don't know if it's the way it's shot or who's doing it. I don't really follow, like, the doc, the filmmakers and stuff, but the way they do it reminded me a lot of the way HBO does it. It seems gritty. Now, I don't know if it's necessarily the stories and stuff like that, that they're maybe, you know, they're sadder and they're a little more realistic and, and uh, American, but I feel like, they really nailed it with the last chance you series the, now going into like this, this is like what feels like they're produced heavily produced, uh, you know, hard knock series. So what uh, this is to me, I'm like, okay, let me see what they got. And they picked for, they followed around three quarterbacks was their formula. They picked Patrick Mahomes, Marcus Mariota and, um, and um, Kirk cousins. Kirk cousins. So, you said you're three episodes in? I'm three episodes in, yeah. Love it. Okay. I just finished it. Eight. So, I mean, the last, well, for whatever. Let, let's talk about Kirk Cousins first, because the people they chose were interesting. They chose, obviously, a superstar, probably the most popular football player now that Tom Brady's retired, and the face of football. They chose uh, Kirk Cousins. Well, they chose Marcus Mariota, which was interesting to me because it was like, hey, this this is like our Hail Mary. This could either be – this is going to go good either way. This is either going to be – he's going to be a huge success story and we caught, you know, lightning in a bottle or predictably the way it went, this guy's probably going to end up losing his job. And then Kirk Cousins, who, you know, I don't really know much. I didn't know much about Kirk Cousins. I'd never really seen any interviews with him. But the episode three, I can't tell if if that was the episode where they heavily covered his, like – routine and what he does did you yeah. get to the tuesdays for the, stuff? For the yeah. pain tolerance that i think the episode's called pain something pain yeah, kings yeah. or whatever um very he's the he was the most interesting to me because I, i'm telling you if i had a daughter that's exactly who you would want your daughter to marry this guy is literally the epitome of like who the all-american person boy you want your daughter whoever to marry because i mean family guy uh completely regimented uh but also i don't even know if you got to the part where you know he takes tuesdays off tuesdays are non-football days for him he's had it in his contract for eight years he doesn't go to the building he doesn't do anything football related every single tuesday even during the nfl season it is his day to hang with his family. He takes his kids to school, and then him and his wife go on dates. And the wife is, I mean, another person where you were like, this is a caricature of a person. Like, this is an, she's an SNL sketch of, a, of like, the perfect uh, doting, 
uh, Stepford Housewife. I said, and, and both of them, it's a big umbrella under religion. Everything is religion. So even at night, we're, we're ending on our prayers and stuff. But seeing how Kirk Cousins trains his brain, like le- legitimately like trains his brain and, and the hard work that he puts in, it feels weird that he takes one day during the NFL season completely off. Like he doesn't look at tape. He doesn't look at film. He doesn't go into the building to work out. He doesn't have his own thing on the side. It's just like a family fucking day. And, but what wraps around that is like his dedication to what he's doing, talking to the psychologist, uh, getting the fucking electrodes on his head to see if his brain works right. Decision-making stuff like legitimate, like he could work. He, he has this thing where he puts his like things on his brain and then he watches something and the screen will go away when his brain figures out he's not paying attention to it anymore. Like when he starts to unfocus, the screen goes away and immediately captures his attention again to train your brain. It's like an ADHD's worst nightmare. You know, like it just everything would go away when you're not <laughs> completely fo- focused on this thing. So yeah. it's crazy to see all the stuff that he's putting into. And you look, the, the, I mean, he is a small quarterback. And you guys are up to that one, the pain management one. He is on the smaller side of quarterbacks, and he does, like, take a lot of abuse. to. I mean, all these guys do. All these guys are getting huge, you know, wear and tear on their bodies. I, I'm interested in seeing, like, the pain management stuff, the stuff that they do to kind of repair themselves. Mahomes has got his own routine. But then again, spoiler alert, Mariota is gone. Like, you know, they don't really even cover him that much the last three episodes, so... If you're in this thing for Marcus Mariota, it's over after the first couple episodes. Um, he has a baby and his life moves on, and they seem very happy. Uh, and he, he landed in Philly. He's going to be yes. great as Jalen's backup. And if Jalen goes down for whatever reason, he's going to step right in, and he uh, is kind of a similar type of quarterback. I think that was what it was. You kind of watched a person who had reached – pinnacles that most people will never ever i mean only how many guys have won the heisman uh he was a second round draft pick he's gotten multiple opportunities to be the guy to be the person uh never i never really came to a point where you were like how the fuck are they still playing this guy Mm -hmm. but he just never got over that whatever that hump was to being the guy that just is like like the kirk cousins almost where you're like, I don't necessarily understand or believe that this guy is our franchise quarterback. We're paying him like he is, but we don't really get it. But we, you know, but we can't really knock him. We can't his, really, his numbers justify the it. Numbers, yeah. So, and M- Mariota's didn't get to that point. So nah. I think that's why you were like, all right, well, this guy's going to go up by the wayside. And then, you know, they covered him at the end and talked about him going to Philly and stuff. But um, the Kirk Cousins, as, a, as, as the quarterback, was. I mean, I, I found myself like going off because it was it was so plain and vanilla, and so like, but it was almost magical in my thought. Pro- I'm like, this guy is like the Manchurian Candidate. Like he he the, you like when you tell a kid, and I could just see those like Midwest kids, like son, you're going to be the quarterback at Michigan State. You're going to believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. You're going to marry a beautiful woman that's going to make you happy and give you as many kids as you want. Like Ryan Tannehill, have another one. And you're going to be, and if you follow this path, you will, you will, like, you will be happy. And I I think that's what he legitimately did. He just went down this one path. And I feel like he is like, strange, like, uh, he's a dork. He's a, he's not like Justin Tucker dorky where he sings opera and shit, but he's a fucking dork. Kirk Cousins is a big dork. Um, And he just, you know, moved himself into the right. But, okay, let me get to fucking Patrick Mahomes because this is fascinating to me. I did not <laughs> – Patrick Mahomes has an unfortunate voice. So just when, they go, when, they, when they're heavy on him – Hey, what are you talking about, it's, Steve? It's, uh, it's a little – His voice his voice is completely normal. It's very it's – very, it's high – you know, look, I'm, um, guys, let's go. It's a little up here. <laughs> him, Garrett Cole. He, he, could, he could voice a Muppet. Yeah, Kermit, it's almost Kermit the Frog. <laughs> it's up here. Garrett Cole's the same way. And for these vicious competitors to have these voices, they're like, come on, guys, let's go. It's just weird. It's a weird thing. 
it felt it feels weird to watch. But then they cut to the family. Now, Brittany, I don't know if you followed his wife's like saga, but like people don't like her, I guess, on the Internet. She's not a person that people cheer for. Uh, I know the brothers got a, a bad, bad reputation, too, for being on the Internet. But the two of them together. Watching her because her interview stuff at the house, you could tell she's trying to keep it normal, keep it together. The camera's right on me. We've done makeup, like the interview parts. But when they're like at games and stuff, you see you see the real her come out and she's trash. She's, you know, I don't, I don't like. It's she's a she could tell she's. Uh, I think a lot of people around Patrick Mahomes believe that they are themselves Patrick Mahomes. You know what I'm saying? Like they like they believe that they are part of as I'm sure all these guys do like the Patrick Mahomes circle world and they all are and everybody deserves exactly what Patrick Mahomes get. We're a TV show. We're the Patrick Mahomes TV show. But we are all the stars get we're all stars of it. When they don't understand that the only person that's the star, it's the Patrick Mahomes show. And you guys are just people that are around. Now, again, the moms, the dads, I could tell they don't really get along. I don't think Patrick Mahomes' dad and Patrick Mahomes, because, like, I, want, I mean, spoiler alert, they won the Super Bowl, so they're covering him at the end. I guess they pig pen off on the field, like an area that like, only like players and their families can go into, so they can like actually like have a little bit of a celebra- celebration with their family. At one point, he's like sitting there with his wife and his daughter and his newborn son, Mahomes. His mom comes down, leans and kisses. He goes, oh, hold on. I got to go say hello to dad. Puts the baby down, gets up, has to go to the pig pen fence and like call security to get his dad over. Like the dad's not allowed in the pig pen fence. So I, I'm not saying it's the dad. I'm just saying I think it's one parent allowed in the, in the, in the pig pen area. God, unless god forbid there's an injury i think at one point you know remember when he got hurt at jacksonville they covered that like both parents were there for that um but anyway it was uh it, it was interesting to watch the, Brittany. i think it's yeah Brittany and the brother i don't even know the brother's name during the games during these tremendous moments where they have like that kind of you know that what looks security cam in the in the box where these guys sit Every single time, something humongous where you and and me, all of us, all the football fans in the world are sitting there with bated breath, like, I can't believe what's going on here. I can't believe that just happened. It's a two of them. When they go to both of them looking at their phones like this. Every, every single time. Every time. The brother had never made one single like I can't believe that happened. He he had zero investment in the game. When he when they won the Super Bowl, you know, he comes he's hugging Kelsey. Then they clear the room. They they clear the the field out. She comes over, gives him a kiss. The brother comes over, right? No hug, no nothing. He's just boom right here, taking pictures. No like congratulations. No like I can't believe that happened. How are you doing? Your ankle almost almost snapped off. No, nothing. Zero concern. <laughs> so to me, that, that goes like, these people are fucking delusional. Now, I guess when you're married and you're the brother, you have a certain where you're going to be like, I'm taking this for granted. They're not, he's not getting rid of me. I'm going to hang her on. But they, the sense of entitlement that I, you feel when you watch it, it's mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. Like, it's insane. It really is. I just, I, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I'm, I watched it and I was like, it's, I because mean, you know, I don't care like what really, the game stuff is cool because you slow down some of these plays and they kind of do the little thing where they'll be like, hey, I thought on this play, they'll run it back. So you get to see what, like, I thought the coverage was this and blah, blah, blah. So it gets a little technical, which is fine. But the personality stuff, although you didn't really have like, None of them are like boisterous, like kind of people. Like you know, when you get a hard knocks at a team together, you can find two or three wackos you can follow for an episode and make it a funny thing. None, none of them really had any sort of, but just if the little nuances about what, like Patrick Mahomes goes, like what his life is like, it's going to be real interesting to see. I just, 
I think he's fine. I think both parents are level headed, but what's going on around him is really like. Didn't the brother get accused of something recently too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like a thing, right? This is they didn't cover any of that. Well, why would they? <laughs> yeah. The yeah. vibe I get from watching them, and this is not a comment on. Uh, I'm sure Patrick and Brittany are in love and they have a good relationship together. But the vibe I get from her and Jackson is kind of like when we'd watch The Bachelor and there'd be a contestant. You're like, they're not there for the right reason. This is yes. all a brand building scheme. And yes. I'm focused on my brand. I'm, I'm using, I'm riding the coattails of this thing to build my brand and get as many followers as I possibly can. Jackson, 100% is that. I don't think he probably even likes football. Oh, no. I don't even know what this guy does. He could not be any he's a, less He's a TikToker. Interested. He's literally a That's TikToker. What it is. That's his job. And I, it looks to me, they didn't interview him once, which was shocking to me because I could tell he probably was diving in front of the camera as much as he possibly could. But I'm sure there's B-roll footage. There's 17 hours of B-roll yeah. footage of Jackson <laughs> laying on the floor somewhere at Netflix. But yep. you could tell, like, he's probably, like, he, it, it, you, I'm just... I'm looking at the guy. He's probably like, I'm so upset that my brother got drafted by Kansas City. Like, like I'm stuck in the middle of Kansas City. Like, he's probably the only person when Kansas City offered Mahomes a 10-year deal. You know, this is, we're going to make you, like, you're going to be Joe Kansas City. We're going to name rename the fucking city after you, or maybe even the state. Please. He's, the brother was probably like, you know, let's just see what, like, L.A. has to say. Like, the Jets need a quarterback. Like he was probably angling, the only person angling to get to a major media market strictly mm -hmm. for his own fucking benefit. But, and you could, I just, you could tell. I could see it. You could tell. I mean, there's no way, even you can't even say take it out of context. There's no way in these moments you could just cut to any person like sitting there, like just on their phone, not paying attention to like your family member almost dying on the field it wasn't like a second before that he was like <gasps> you know it was never that it was just like huh what's going on oh whatever let me know what what happens at the end i'll tweet about it or whatever you know it's like mm -hmm. i'm like oh he's just he would be a person that i would not get along with in any way shape or form and it would be real hard for me to have to swallow being around him you know, forcefully. It would be tough. It was yeah. interesting, though. Know. Um, yeah, the documentary is to... fascinating. And to see what they actually go through, like really go through, um, I think that's what uh, Peyton was trying to capture, just how hard that position is physically and mentally and everything. Um, and it's just relentless that every, every week you got to start over. And... Um, you know, it certainly isn't going to make people like Brittany or Jackson. Uh, it did not. I, I mean, in their mind, they probably think they look amazing. But, uh, yeah. That's what I'm wondering. What they, what, How they feel? Are yeah, they like. You know, they're they're the type of sociopath. It's like I. It's like a comic that bombs on stage and then gets off. It's like, oh, that was a great crowd. I murdered. That's what they're thinking. That's right what now. I want. Yeah. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. I get that. I was wondering that. It's the same thing about, did you watch that HBO show, uh, The Idol? I haven't watched it yet. Because it's uh, it's one of those shows you watch and you're like, this can't, this isn't a real thing. Like, this is not, like, how did somebody make this real? Like, this is pornography. This is porn. And, and like, they're airing it like it's a real television show. And then... It gets weirder and weirder. And at one point, you're like, oh, my God, this could be the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then you quickly, you're like, wait a minute. Why have I had, like, three bottles of wine just to get through these first three episodes of television? You know, like, that. this is not – and then you realize it's – and I'm saying to myself, am I the only one? Because I'm. it's obviously made for young people. So I'm saying, am I miss? Am, am I just – This is this it? Is this the moment where I find out I am, like, old? Like, I'm going to – because to me, this is – garbage hot garbage that i'm watching like stirred up overproduced hot garbage like how do you make hank azaria not not funny or good hot garbage so i was like this is terrible but then i'm like oh well, maybe i'm wrong and then i check the internet and i see like the weekends like i'm sorry i didn't even know that 
I offended so many people by making that. <laughs> <laughs> like his career might be in jeopardy based on this one show. And I was like, all right, at least we haven't lost complete perspective of what the of what wor- the world should be. Mm-hmm. And so So should I, I not watch it? It wasn't a great endorsement. I don't dude again. Is it gonna change I, me as a person? Here's what I will say. It's one of those things where it's almost it's I, I, I don't know why I'm trying to jam it into this. It's like the Kirk Cousins of television show. There's <laughs> like like Johnny Depp's daughter is really good. She's a very good actress. You can tell she's there are moments in this where you're like, this girl can fucking and she's gorgeous. And the weekend. Well, I don't even know like what his name is, but like the the character he he as creepy and weird and and I think un asexual. Like he's supposed to be like a very he's predatory, but like a sexual person. Like he looks like it doesn't. I'm like this is gross to me. So that's why it looked funny to me. Like almost like you're doing it like a like a joke. But he never sways from it. He never gets bad. He sticks to this guy that he's got to play. And so it was almost like he these guys were told to do this. They did it, and then. This was never executed well whatsoever. It, it started. It was problems from the very, very beginning. Tonally, everything it had a lot of problems. So I don't blame like really any one specific person in the thing. I think it's the people that that said yes and the directions they took and all the. I don't know. It was weird, but it doesn't matter anymore because we're all on strike. Do we even want to talk about this, guys? Are we breaking <laughs> union rules right now? Uh, well, Apparently, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a union guy, so I don't have to worry about oh. any of that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I, I will, am. So I am available to cross any picket line that they want me to cross. I'm in the Writers Guild and the SAG, and so I'm on double strike. I, I doubly strike everything right now. By the way, let's talk about the strike for a second because this is okay. Here's the problem with the SAG strike, and I watched the whole Fran Drasher thing yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw that, but. She makes so many great points, and it's nice having a person that knows how to speak in front of people leading the union, which is kind of what we get. Sometimes we get weirdos, but Fran Drescher is is uh, she's she's a good spokesperson for us. And you know, you see like these companies and what they make and what they're paying these these executives. I mean, like when when a CEO as a bonus gets more money than you know the entire writing staff of a network. That's a problem. So again, it goes to different, it goes to wage gap stuff. Uh, overall, you know, if you can get a, a TV writing job or, or you're going to be probably well paid. If you can stick on a show that's going to be, and you're a hard worker and you're a funny person. But the problem is they're, they're all the rooms are getting smaller. And now obviously with AI, everything can be pared down to a couple things. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is the, 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 the problem that we have, and this is what I was explaining to, to Tracy, is like, I feel like with every other union, when, when the teachers go on strike, when uh, railroad people go on strike, the truckers go on strike, the policemen go on strike, those are immediate problems that affect the public the fucking day that it happens. Mm-hmm. There is no urgency to this. There's no, there's, no, and that's why they, they when, when it leaked that the producers had a plan to just kind of wait this thing out. They have that advantage, okay? No one in the real world, if I go to my son's baseball game tournament this weekend, if I go around and ask 10 random Long Island parents, okay, who is on strike, they might know because it happened yesterday, but they don't know what they're missing. They don't understand what they're, like, TV is still on. Show They can watch The Big Bang Theory, uh, all the reruns. They can watch Young Sheldon whenever they want on Netflix. So, Day to day, there is zero effect on the regular person's life. And to be able to settle a a large negotiation like this, and for both sides to get a little bit of what they want, you need urgency. And there's zero urgency. No one needs for this to end, except for the actors and the writers. That's it. They They're the only ones. The only way that the general public will get, become invested in this is if Christmas time or January rolls around and there's been zero television, we're watching fucking Deal or No Deal again on NBC. You might have a shot then. But there's not going to be like, guys, we're going to protest in the streets. 
The well, teachers the- go on strike in New York City, and in September, when the time is to go on strike, the right fucking time, when it's, you know, the next day, everyone's kids are not going to school, there's no bus drivers, and you got to go to work, and you don't have anyone to watch the kid. That's urgency. That's when you call your, your, your lawmakers and you go, get this fucking shit together. Settle it up. No mm-hmm. one's doing, no one's going to do that. No one's going to step in. So you know who's going to lose? The actors. And the, so the, I guess make a big stink as big as you can in the beginning of this, because when we roll over and get our fucking uh, shit shoved up our ass again, it will be what it is. No one's going to miss us. Do you think anyone cares oh, that the Emmys won't happen this year? Oh, my God, the Emmy. Do you think anyone in America is going to give a shit that the Emmys could be fucking canceled? No one. No, but uh, with Comic-Con approaching, I think maybe yes. it'll okay. raise a little bit more awareness when every Marvel and Disney no. and every DC movie and TV show, they're going, well, we don't know when it's going to come out. That might get people talking, and that might help a little bit, but... So Here's point. what it's happens. Here's much. what's going to hurt. Here's what's going to hurt. Okay, and the reason why you've got so much Barbie and Ken shoved shit, shit shoved down your throat because that now they know that they're not going to get on planes and they're not going to go to New Zealand and fly around and promote the movie because they're in solidarity with the union. But they already got what they wanted out of it. Okay, they already got enough promotion. They got enough promotion for that movie and for the Mission Impossible one coming out and for uh, you know. For uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, they, you know, those movies are already, people know about those movies. But when the movies that they want to launch in the fall, those stars won't promote them. Then that's when you might get a little bit of pressure on the, on the studio. Look, we don't want to get this thing. We spent a lot of money on it. We don't want it to go into the can because nobody knows this thing's coming out or because we can't get our stars to go out and promote this thing. Which is really, you know, when you come down to it, what they pay you for. Ryan Gosling is a very, very handsome, good actor. But I'm, there's like three or four you could probably find in New York City right now. Just as good, maybe, and maybe just as handsome. But they don't have his name. And so he sells fucking movies. He can go out and do it. That's what he's getting paid for. So when that doesn't happen, then you'll have a fucking... Then you'll have an, a problem. But till then, nothing is going to happen. You are an idiot if you think this is going to be like on people's front. Wait till football starts. My God. Wait till football starts. Do you think anyone is going to give a fuck? You may wake up. The actors might wake up and it could be the day after the Super Bowl in mid-February. And they go, we still don't have jobs. After 100 days which we're coming up on, on the Writers Guild, they're allowed to, the producers are allowed to terminate all the contracts they want. So say you signed the fucking, uh, uh, you know, the Robinson Cano contract of the New York Mets, you know, four, 10 years, $240 million. And you got to keep paying him, even though he's not playing for you anymore. You can cut that contract if you're a producer. You can get rid of the, the guy the guy that you don't want on your roster anymore and you don't have to pay him. So you think they're good they they're any they're in any uh rush to negotiate? They're not th- those guys aren't going to lose their houses. All the employees at all the the, the networks aren't going to they're not going to have to lay people off. So there's only one good that's going to be one big loser in this and there always is. Because we again are not a necessary it's i know it's important it makes you feel good it's 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 entertainment it's you know it's passing time there are beautiful performances and they touch you and they make you but you don't fucking need it you don't need it it's it's not necessary there's wants and needs i need a house i need water i need shelter i need puss but you don't need to cry at a film it's not a need so we're fucked but not you because you're you know brenton you could be the new uh that was super uplifting steve no it's the truth dude i, I what am i going to be here to tell you that it's going to be great <laughs> that we're gonna oh maybe well we when have we won 
Whenever the only good news we have out of this whole thing is that we caught AI right before it became a thing, which it's going to become. Yeah, I'm just shocked that that happened. That's that is the only wild, news though. The news about uh, that uh, part of the union is fighting the AI with the background actors. That's crazy. That they'll like, let's say I want to, I want to be a background yeah. actor, and I walk in day one, and they like my image, so they capture it all. And they pay me just for that one day, but then they can use me for everything for the next thousand years and never have to pay me again. Here's the good thing about being ostracized from the industry for the past eight years. I've been preparing for this. Okay. <laughs> I've been I like like every I, I am like the guy that's been building the bunker. You know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. guy that's you're like, oh, that guy's a weird person. He's doing stuff that no one else is doing. Like, why is he, what is he preparing for? This is what I've been preparing for. When it all goes away, when you're left with nothing, I've been preparing for this. You know how many people are, are going to be, they're, they're not prepared to go around the world and people don't notice them anymore and don't recognize them. They're not stars anymore. We're going to lose stars because of this. Television well, stars. No, we're going to gain a shitload of comedians trying comedy for the first time. Um, I've been preparing for that, too. And by the way, that's <laughs> been happening for the last eight years as yeah, well. Yeah, it has. But we're going to start getting yeah. bumped by people from uh, Disney Plus um, shows that ran yeah. the episodes. And Welcome to my fucking life. Brenton, yeah. I've been losing weekends because <laughs> someone's someone a local uh, had a YouTube video make get five million hits and they want to do the club that weekend. Yeah, I've been preparing for this. Okay, so get ready, SAG and after members. Welcome to our world. It's a real fucking shithole. We have here. no benefits. We have no union. Yeah, no we union work for bottled water and compliments. And we're we're smart enough to know that if we were like, you know what, we're gonna go away and you're gonna miss us, that you won't. You'll find something else to go watch. Yeah. That's why we have to shove our faces down your fucking throat. Make a video, get a reel, make a video, get a reel. They're stupid, they'll forget. Look at the fucking actors who are like, well, we're gonna walk away and we're gonna make you you'll miss us. They're not gonna. America's not gonna miss you. There's football. Do you understand that? Put your tail between your legs, bend over, and say, Mr. Iger, give me another one. Thank you. May I have another? Please don't have a robot be me. That's it. Do you understand how excited I'm going to be when I see clips of my body and voice put together from the league in some new commercial I didn't even know was coming out? Do you know why? Because the idiot, not the idiots, but the normal people I live around, they don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. They don't know that it's not you going out there. They'll say to me, hey, I saw your new commercial. They don't know. That's why the studios are going to win. Because they know the normal people don't understand the difference between, oh, that was really him or... Do you know how many times I explain to people, like my friends and stuff, like, oh, that's a voice, like a, what they call, like, ADR. When, if I'm, we're doing a scene together, right, and all of a sudden a car drives by during the best part of my thing, they're going to stay on my shot, but later on, if the line got fucked up, the audio, I'll go into a room and say, like, the same line, like, da -da 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 -da. and then they just put that audio in, and it's like that. It was like I did it right there, but I wasn't right there. People don't know that. They don't even know. They don't understand how any of this works. They're not going to understand that I didn't actually go in and shoot something. I was just pieced together in a computer. But I, I, you know who, I know, and I'm fine with it now. I'm okay with it. I've put it to bed. Get on board, everybody else, because it's going to happen to you too. So that's my two cents on the fucking, did I vote yes on a strike? Yeah. Strike away, baby. I want to go pick it, visit some of my friends. I haven't seen them in a while. I'm I'm excited. We're all in the same boat now. Uh, what are your predictions for the strike? Yeah, uh, it's it's some. Well, the studio has all the leverage, so we're going to ride this out probably another two to three months, and then 
both the unions are going to just have to give up a lot of things that they want and settle and and maybe they get a, a little percentage uh, increase in pay, but overall they're going to be fucked over and they're going to have to spin it like, well, we won, we did it guys back to work, but it's not going to end well. No studios will win. And if the studios uh, don't like the actors and the writers, they will replace all of them. There are millions of people and everybody is replaceable at this point. That's, the unfortunate side of AI. We are all replaceable. This podcast will be three robots in two years. Do we, I mean, will we still get credit for it? I, I would love if a robot did my job. For me. No. People are against, oh, wait, how do you feel about, because, you know, Cassie works for Hulu. Yeah. So you're sleeping with the enemy, dude. Well, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm also a, a Disney shareholder, so I'm very torn on the, uh, I mean, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about the bottom line. Do you think this is over in two to three months? I think no. it. I think it will be, just because uh, no one is going to care a week from now, other than the actors and the writers, and they're going to realize we're going to lose our lively, like we're going to lose our homes. That's straight up what's going to happen, and maybe the studios will be able to go okay. We're not going to give you all of this stuff, but let's just get back to work because we want to make our money. And here's a little bit. This is enough after months of starving. This is enough for us to go, okay, we'll come back and we'll get back to work. By the way, just so you know, like, you know, the NFL union and all those union stuff, the play, uh, they, they, when they go on strike, they get, they pay their players. It, it's not nearly what they make, but they give them a little bit of money. Yeah. You think we, you think we would do something like that considering we're probably in the same boat of like, if we're not doing this, chances are we're not making any fucking money. You no. think they had any sort of foresight to think that, like, maybe when this whole thing goes down, we should have some sort of, like, stipend ready to go when people start, you know, they're going to start losing their insurance. Mm -hmm. They're going to fall off insurance soon. I mean, it, it, it's, it, there is, um, it's not going to end well. Yeah. That's why I'm like, yeah, uh, yes, of course, first time going on strike in 60 years. Yeah, we're really going to try to fight for something this time. But you know what? We we are not an industry that is in the position. We're actors, dude. We're well, there's actors. Also, we should um, be used to this. I understand it's it's part of our our lives. You walk into a room, you do the best you can do, and then it's out of your fucking hands. You, the people that are in power are going to make this. We're never going to have true power i mean yes you were allowed to make our own films and make your own tv shows and go to smaller places and get it done and out there and stuff but as far as true power signing checks making cash paying fucking bills that's the real power and they turn the machine off and they can turn it on and off whenever they fucking want so you can pretend you have it. You can pretend and sit there and bitch and whine, which I love watching. And I'm, I agree with everything Fran Drescher said, but it's going to end up badly for us. It always does. And nothing's changed. It's only gotten worse. There's so. several uh, indie productions that we're already filming and they're obviously shutting down, but there's no safety net for them. There's, they're not receiving any uh, money. They're, Basically, all these, you know, producers, uh, crew, and 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 these production companies are going to go bankrupt because they've already shot, you know, however many scenes, and they've already put in so many days, and they're budgeted so tight that taking any time off, like it, it just fucks them. And these movies are just never going to come out, and people are going to lose their homes because of it. Yeah. Well, question two. So these streamers like Amazon and Apple, they probably don't give a shit if the strike goes two years because they have the cash no. to they probably yeah. hope it does yes the, the more the longer it goes the more they win yeah it's almost like owning a house yes i have to pay a mortgage every month but i know when i actually go to sell it i'm going to make more money than i actually put into this fucking thing it's it's the the, more, the longer they wait the more they're going to get out of the end i mean the producers mm -hmm. it's the reverse the for us die, right the network's yeah. Now, if they did this the day before the American Idol uh, finale, and not even American Idol, what's the thing? The, no, there's nothing anymore. America's there's nothing on television. 
Not Mad even Singer. Matt or Matt Singer. America's Got Another Talent day. is still pretty. It's pretty decent. It, the other problem good, for good the viewership actors is, and the other the other problem for actors is that I mean we've done it to ourselves is that we we can't compete with sports. You think you can? You can't. Sports always wins. Steve, Number one, it's you unscripted. Need to allow us to start gambling on what's going to happen in these TV shows and movies, and then we'll care more. Yeah. No, hey, no. Steve, are the, are the NFL writers striking too? Oh, I would love to know that. And now that let me tell you something. That would be the only hope they have of solving this thing. If the if Goodell's right now going like, well, how are we going to get our script ready in two weeks? That would be the only way that you will see this actors and writers strike get settled before. No, that. no, no. They'll just say whatever. We don't need the writers, and they'll get a dozen we'll do it the way we players did it in the with 70s. Yeah. Just put them on camera yeah. and see what happens. Um, <laughs> it'll be like it'll be like uh, the NBA TNT crew on steroids. Yes, the only thing anyone cares about from now on till February is is fo- football, the World Series. No one really watches the NBA till after the new year, even though they have this, they announced their new in season thing, which we'll see how the fucking that goes. But another, the problem actors have, we we're, we think we're in competition with sports for the viewer's eye. It's not even close. No. It's not even close. It's not even close. There's no show that people are like, if this thing doesn't come back and I don't find out about it tomorrow, I'm going to kill myself. It's not, it's not happening. Everything is at your own disposal. Do what you want whenever you want to do it on your own time. It's not even close. So it's over. Is Hard Knocks going to happen next week? I assume they're going to go to work on that. Yeah, they're supposed to. I mean, maybe the Jets fans are the only ones happy about the strike if they actually doesn't have, if they don't have Hard Knocks. Because apparently they're not happy that they got chosen to be the Hard Knocks team. Did you no, hear this they, at all? Or no? uh, oh, well, no. The, none of the teams that were eligible wanted to do it. That's why they were almost going to repeat with the Lions. And the Lions were like, we're not doing that. But there were five teams. Two years in a row. Yeah, they all said teams. no. And also a, another very intriguing team, which you could have easily gone with. I'm not, I don't have a Jets fan. I don't give a shit. I would think it's more. I think they picked the right one for the television show. Yeah. Um, who the fuck's coming into my house? So a van pull up. This could be ending quickly. Um, no, uh, I think that um, I think that uh, they chose the right team for entertainment purposes. But mm-hmm. the Chicago Bears are a very interesting team too. You you have a second year coach. You got a quarterback that's young and talented. They've got some good receivers now. I think they picked up a couple receivers, right? D- DJ Moore. They got Chase Claypool yep. in a trade. And you know their defense is usually pretty decent. So another like, oh, that w- and they've never been on it. I don't believe. I don't. Think I don't think have. the Bears have been covered yet. No. So it's not like they had no other choice. I understand it was a very, like you know, there's a choice A and then a very you know other choice B's B's B's. But you know, it, it wasn't like there was only one thing. So it is going to be interesting. I don't think it really is going to bother. The only person it could possibly bother would be Robert Sala. It's not going to bother Aaron. Cameras don't bother Aaron. He Rogers loves it. He this loves is what him. he wanted. Yep. Those young receivers are all every every kid coming out of college in the last three years has died to be on Hard Knocks. They grew up watching Hard Knocks. This show's been on for you know 10, 15 years now. So they, this is no one's like, oh shit, I'm new and I'm on a. I don't know. You, you think Garrett Wilson doesn't know what to do in front of a fucking TV camera? They're all fine with it. It's probably because there's so much pressure. You're gonna see Robert Sala. You know, you're gonna. It's not his show, but it's like you're gonna get to watch him work now. Mm-hmm. And some, you know, some coaches might not be comfortable with that. Homeboy last year, uh, what's his name? Um, and Detroit, fucking uh, Big Daddy. What's his name? The Cryer. No, the coach. Yeah, Dan uh, yeah. Campbell. Dan, Dan uh, Campbell. Dan Campbell. Yeah, he probably didn't bother him because he is who he is. I, you know, what I'm saying like he it doesn't really like. I don't think he 
I think Robert Sala probably is like, I have to filter myself. I kind of have to be a little more calculated in what I say or this or that. So it might throw you off a little bit there. But it will happen, right? They're not they're not SAG after, are they? No, no SAG after. it should. It'll happen. Hold on. I got to see who the – someone's at my front door. All right, you guys talk amongst yourselves for a second. I'll be right back. Uh, well, I think the uh, the two big ticket items that uh, Steve is glossing over is Saquon maybe holding out, and the dates coming up where they have to reach an agreement, or he could miss week one and, and more of the season. And then uh, Philip Rivers is going to have baby number ten, I so saw he that. he can finally quarterback an entire offense. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I'm on episode three of court of quarterback too. Yeah, so I, mean, I think we're on the same pace. I I think it's I think it's great. I love seeing how I think they, it's fantastic. Uh, they they peel back. This is how everything's made. This is the process and everything. Steve. Yeah. Yo. I, I need your comments on Saquon. He's probably going to hold out. The date's coming up soon, and if he misses that date, then no week one. Monday. You know, I'd heard, I'd heard several – look, the numbers are getting closer on the yearly thing. I think it's the probably the how many years. Everyone said so far that Saquon wants to be a Giant. The Giants want him to be, you know, on the team. But I, don't, I, I just – I think this is Joe Shane and what he's trying to do there. He does not want to get buried in a contract that in a year from now, he's going to regret signing. Yeah. The problem that he has is that without Saquon on the field, it is a very different team. You've brought in other weapons to be sure other receivers. It is going to be a different team as far as the ability to throw the ball and to who they can throw the ball to and the, you know down the field but you without Saquon there as a running back who can run between the tackles as well as break outside and catch the ball in the flat it is a much harder job and so yes without putting yourself in a financial situation where two or three years from now you're fucked because you've got this thing you may not be taking the step forward you think you are this year because you're missing a really, really big piece. And I think that for the Giants, the day that they signed Daniel Jones to his contract, they never really – they're much like, I guess, like the producers. They don't really have a a motivation to get off of to, – to, to get off the franchise tag. Yeah. What would be their motivation to cut off the franchise tag? You know, will he sit out? Yeah. But, I mean, look, has that always been the best case scenario? Guys have done that. No, no. I mean, he's, ben- he's he's too old, and he's been injury-ridden the last few yeah. seasons. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. So there's no Le- way he's going to go Le'Veon somewhere Bell else and get 10-plus million. He wasn't the same Le'Veon Bell when he went away Yeah, for the year. So it, it is a risky move on 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 both parts, and I understand. I literally understand everyone here. The problem with that Saquon is not understanding, and the, and I would be I would be the same way. It's a very tough thing because everyone around him is he's, he works harder than everybody else. His leg off season workouts are are like James Harrison is probably the closest comp you can have to someone who works as hard as he does, and so. He, you, what has he done to devalue, to, to make you say, like, he's not worth it? He plays the, the, the problem is the position he plays. Yeah. It's not that his value has gone down, it's the value of the position has gone down remarkably. And you can blame Todd Gurley for it, and you can blame Ezekiel Elliott for it, and you can blame, uh, there's probably another contract of a running back that I'm missing. McCaffrey and those guys, that's going to be the last time you're going to see four years, 50 million for a running back. It's not going to happen anymore. They're coming out of college now, ready to go. Four, five, six really good ones every single fucking year. 
like ATM machines. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. And there's no, it doesn't, ha- there's no it doesn't happen with quarterbacks. It doesn't happen with um, offensive linemen. Unfortunately, it happens with one of the most athletic, dangerous positions. But they also rotate those guys more than they ever have. The offense yeah. has evolved, and you know you're not rotating your quarterback or your wide receiver one or your your offensive line. It, you're, I mean, at most, if you're Derrick Henry, you're still only on the field for like seventy two percent of the snaps. You're not yeah. out there every play, and he's yeah. like the outlier. And most guys are out there sixty percent or fifty percent. Everything is split. So, you know, and most teams want coming a dime a to- dozen. Most teams want two, mm-hmm. like almost. It's not really no more like one quarterback, you know, running back one, running back two. It's more like one A and one B now, and because and there then, are more, and then you have a third guy. Job, but then you have a third guy that comes in on third down to catch passes. Yeah. So there's more jobs. The problem is they're not paying the same. Yeah. So that's that's the problem, and so you got one of the best ones out there who wants to get paid like. Not like he deserves, but like it's nineteen, you know, ninety nine, and it ain't that. So I get it. Will, will we be a worse team this year without Saquon Barkley? Absolutely. Maybe. Yes, dude. You gotta That's trust Dable. You gotta trust Daniel Jones I, making it step up. And yes, I'm not saying we will be unsuccessful. I'm not saying they won't figure it out. I trust those guys, but. I do believe you cannot replace – it's not just like he's a hand the ball, two downs of he's – a, he's a playmaker who can break at any point. Also, he can catch the ball too. So it's almost a double banger. It's all, He's not Debo Samuel, but it's – it's you know, he's McCaffrey in the way of like this isn't just a running back. This isn't just a power running back. This is different. So I do think it will be – and he's not the worst blocker in the world either, so that helps too. It is a, a you know, it would be a different animal. Now, you know, you go out, you get a couple other guys, and they fill in the gaps, and you have what you have. But I do think Saquon Barkley on the Giants is the best version of the Giants. For how yeah. much money? That's you know. But you know what could happen? He sits out, and then the Giants go and they sign Ezekiel Elliott, who's still just sitting out there. Well, that I mean, again. So now you say to yourself, do the Giants with Ezekiel Elliott and saving money, are they as good as, you know, spending more money and having Saquon Barkley? It's, you know, it's, you'll never know, but it's, that's the reason why you can play these games in your mind. But I, to me, I, I I think your front office, your front office is smart enough to know we don't have a Super Bowl team this year. Yeah. That's but to, yes. if we just figure something out and get around Barkley and not having to pay him, we could easily have a Super Bowl team in two seasons or three seasons if Daniel Jones progresses the way that we think he will. And that's why we gave him the contract we did. So I think they'd be wise to just go, fuck it. We're not going to tank this season, but we're not going to make this mistake that brings down our potential in 2024, 2025, 2026. So we'll let him do whatever he wants to do and he can cry and scream and we'll just, we'll fill in the holes and we'll figure it out. That would be your best route to go. Um, Yeah. I don't want to strap ourselves financially. I don't think they're going to do that. I would like to see, I mean, if they can just get two years, two years and, you know, twenty five million. I think if we can get to that, that would. I don't even know if Saquon won't sign that, but I'm like that would be awesome. If he's smart, he will. Because whoever his agent is, he needs to tell him this is the market now. You're not going to get better than this franchise tag is paying you anywhere. So you're how old is he? He's twenty six, twenty seven now. Yeah, so he's, he's yeah. right at that age where they start their decline. So it's like you're never going to make this money again. And if you sit out you're just basically saying I'm, I'm going to lose this 10 million plus just take the two years, take the 25 and, you know, just be so undeniable that you can maybe go somewhere else and get a few more years. Yeah. That's, you know, you hope that you're believe in your body and you believe in your, you know, your ability to take care of yourself. I know it's a, it's a, you know, it's a tough position to play and it's in a very physical sport, but 
that's probably the best you're going to get right now. It's it's depressing, but that's the way it is. That's the way the NFL is. And, you know, maybe it'll change in a couple of years and positional change or the need for it. But as of right now, it is what that's the way it is. Um, there's no more, you know, fucking uh, um, Barry Sanders or, you know, guys that are like the, the only guy, you know, yeah. Emmett Smith. So we'll see. Um, what else? What else did we miss? Baseball, the All Star Game. Steve, oh, Philip Rivers. You got to step up. Ken, he's psyched, dude. But like, look, dude, think about it. Philip Rivers is—he's probably like Kirk Cousins, but a little like more religious, like even more devout to God. Like it probably plays way more, a little bit more in his life. But it's you know, he's like a guy who doesn't like. He just looks at his wife and that's the only the apple of his eye and he probably doesn't jerk off and he probably just sits there all week long and he gets to have sex with her once a week and he just just destroys her and they don't care about what happens after that they don't care what they did was beautiful and god will tell them when they're not when they're not supposed to have children this woman will have babies into her 50s if she's that if she's fertile this is not the end. This so is not the end. What's I'm the over right under now, on children? 17. And I'm not joking. I'm not <laughs> kidding. I don't even know if we're halfway done. <laughs> what would lead you to believe that they're done? Have you seen his wife? How old is his wife? She's got to be what? 37, 38? How older than that? Probably 40. At least uh, she's uh, 41 years old. Okay. So she's 41, right? She's going to have a baby this year or is it next year? Okay. So 41, she's got about six more years of being able to do it. Now here's the deal. The problem with 17 is, is that unless they have twins, I'm going to miss that number because at some point, here's how they'll get them to stop. The doctor will say to you, you know, Becky, whatever her name is. Uh, uh, sometimes Tiffany. And actually, she's 40. She turns 41. Or wait, no, this okay. is an old article. She's 41. Okay. Tiffany, sometimes when God gives us the beautiful gift of life, sometimes as our body gets older, he won't necessarily give you more than you can handle because God knows we can take care of those babies for you. But the complications of you making it through that might be a bit more. So unless you're ready to say hello to God, your maker himself, Maybe you might want to think about, you know, pulling out once in a while or, you know, blasting it on her face or something like that. Whatever it is, whatever their method of, of sharing their love, but not inside might be. And that might be the only thing. The, the, the fear of going to see God before it's their time might. That's literally. Because let me tell you something. Philip Rivers is still a man. Okay. He's still a very athletic, virile, masculine man. Because he's given his life to the Lord, that's, you know, curbed a lot of, you know, things that have probably, but that once a week that she allows him, that they're allowed, that they share each other's God-given love for each other, it is, I mean, he probably just, it's lucky they, he probably throws five or six babies in her every single time. Do you have a problem with this, Brenton? It seems I mean, like you're not happy with this. It, it's uh, it should be a show. I'm just thinking in my head, how can we monetize this? Mm -hmm. Let's stop oh, following I mean, these weirdo Mormon families and let's follow an actual like American hero. Yeah, well, he coaches high school football now, right? Or you mm -hmm. know. And so that takes. I mean, think about it. He's very busy. I could tell this guy probably you know, watches film, plays with his kids, goes hunting and stuff. And then the one night a week, it's one night a week that he shares it completely devote, much like the passion he gives to football, he gives to his wife. And he throws as many touchdowns inside of her as he can. Now, if I'm, if I'm his oldest kid, I'm probably a little weirded out because I think he's got kids in their 20s. Yeah. And 20s? They're, they're probably having kids. And now I'm going to have like a little baby brother that's, younger than my child then then it gets weird at thanksgiving 
No, because he's still like an athletic person, dude. He he probably is the kind of person he races all their kids on their birthday just to prove he's still faster than them. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, and he probably gets really shitty if he loses. Son, I love you, and the Lord gave me as a blessing uh, from above, but get ready to get your ass whooped. And he puts them on the 50, and he runs with them. Uh, speaking of, I mean, he's, working he's out, only forty-one. He could he could come back. They, they could, he could find another team. He could go play in Canada. He could play in the XFL. They were talking about bringing him back to Indianapolis when uh when remember when yeah. Matt Ryan was like shit in the bed. Mm -hmm. So it's not over for him. No, and we know his prop still works. So that plays a lot. Mm -hmm. Um. What else? What else do we miss? I think the All Star, oh, the Home Run Derby was interesting. Was fun. Did you watch that? I watched the All Star Game. Yeah. Didn't watch the Home Run Derby. Home Run Derby was fun. All Star Game was pretty good too. It's probably the only one that still works as far as like doing it. Nobody gets hurt. It's still pretty competitive. Yeah. You still see good pitching matchups, and it moved quick. Um, so, uh, what else? I'm trying to think. I feel like I covered a lot of the stuff I wanted to get off my chest. Is there a serial killer in Long Island? Yeah, well, he got caught today or yesterday. Mm. It's a Gilgo Beach uh, is in a real shitty part of like, I think it's like the South Shore of Long Island, Nassau County or Queens. I'm not sure. I think it's Queens. It's probably, it's right near Kennedy Airport. And uh, they used to find hookers' bodies there like once a week. I think it was like the 70s and the 80s maybe. And... um Everyone just assumed it was like, honestly, people assumed it was one of two things. Local legend was like, it, it's probably the mafia. They just clean up the problems and they throw them into the, you know, to the re weeds. Or they thought it was like this one police officer, like detective guy who was a real dirty fucking creep who he probably was like picking up hookers, saying he was a cop, trying to fake arrest them and then murdering them. But uh, it ended up it was this architect, I guess. I haven't really read much about it, but. Um, he seems like a real fucking whack. Like apparently, he was talking about eleven years later. I, there was an interview where he mentioned something about it, and but people didn't suspect him at all. I think it's one of those like we had no idea this guy was a fucking serial killer. Ryan I don't know Murphy. exactly how they found out who was him. Yeah, Ryan Murphy cannot wait to start writing this television series. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure it's already happened. I mean, if 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 one of these girls, I mean, they're all white. So they'll make one of them black in the movie. And then uh, one mm -hmm. of them, they'll have special needs. Well, only one needs special needs. Forget it. This is going to be a blockbuster. Uh, I'm going to try to – I've already started studying the picture of the guy so I can start to shape my face mm -hmm. like him. Like, you know, I'll kill the audition for this fucking guy. And uh, fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Maybe if one day film and TV comes back, I can play the Gilgo Beach murderer uh, for, you know, TLC <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, they got him. Well, I think like 30 years after the last murder, but they got, you know. Uh, yeah. What else? What else is going on? There was a drive-by shooting two streets over from me in usually what? quiet Burbank. Yeah, in my neighborhood. So did you hear it or did you just hear about it? Uh, no, we were uh, we were at the Hollywood Bowl and it happened while we were there. And then we came back and then there were just police cars everywhere. And the guy got away and he's still at large. Wow. Did you ask your dog? Did you say, did you see anything? Oh, I'm sure she was barking up a storm. But she's Gunshots. actually, she's actually pretty calm. Like Fourth of July doesn't phase her. So oh yeah. How was your fourth? It was great. Um, but yeah, she did. We were, we we're literally outside. Fireworks were going off all the time and she didn't care. So we got lucky yeah. in that sense with her. I saw that great picture of uh, L.A. that that photographer took of the fireworks going off. It was like 85 million different fireworks at one time. You got one yeah. shot. It's pretty cool. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, uh, my fourth was good, too. Just people over. It rained a little bit, but we got a good fireworks show off. Um, and it's I love shooting off fireworks. We have our tube still to keep everything safe that I kept from my old place. And so uh, it was good. Nice little 15-minute show. Kids like it. Mm-hmm. And, and Joey Chestnut uh, is still the champion. Did you see that one fact that if they stacked up every hot dog that he ate in the last 16 years, it would be higher than the Empire State Building? 
<laughs> or the Statue of Liberty. Sorry. So gross. The most disgusting. Dude. <laughs> I would. I mean, I love hot dogs, and we I tried too, it. Too, yeah. Like, we I did do a Yankee contest, Stadium. but I don't think we got more than like six or seven. Mm -hmm. He's literally doing yeah. ten times that. I went to Yankee Stadium and I ordered a hot dog, and I almost it was like the first time ever I couldn't finish the whole one hot dog. I was like, feel like I'm sweating already, like the meat sweats already. So yeah, it's crazy. And then I was almost canceled. Did you see they canceled it at first? Mm -hmm. And well, there was a it back. rain delay. It's a real sport, Steve. They have rain delays and everything. You're going to get a lot of hangry people if you cancel. I mean, I'm sure these guys <laughs> prime their bodies up. Yeah. You know, and they were like, look, dude, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to eat your fucking face off if you don't get those dogs in my, <laughs> in my hand pretty soon. Uh, I didn't I, I didn't watch it because of the delay. So it started. I had people come over at the time it started. So, um, yeah. What else? I think that's it, guys. I think I'm out of it. I don't have anything else. Anything else? I'm just waiting for, waiting for football. I've been doing all my uh, prep, getting ready for the oh, season. Oh, yeah, by the and... way, let me promote, uh, if you have any uh, need to uh, have me talk shit about fantasy football or pick your draft order or anything like that, hit the cameo up. I've already done about 15 in the past week. Here's my new style. Here's what I'm doing. Ready? I let the kids choose the names order of like whatever your draft or right and then i go play golf if i break 80 i flip it on it's upside down if i don't i keep it the way it is boom everybody wins i've done about 15 i've broken 80 twice so only twice is it flipped upside down but right, still well. and i tell the people so that they know where they would have been had i not done what i'm fucking capable of doing <laughs> how about that uh speaking of which the uh uh, the British Open, also known as the British, British Open, Open, is next week uh, in, I don't know where they're playing it, obviously someplace uh, in fucking England. British, somewhere British. In England, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we'll have all the live guys back, and I think uh, Cam Smith is the defending champion. And But I, I really, really like um, Xander Shoffley to maybe go out and win a, his first major, or... Or, 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 ready for this? Brooks Kepka again, yeah. win his sixth major, which would then put him in pretty rarefied air. Mm -hmm. I think only like eight guys have like six or more. How many rarefied does air, Tiger have? 16, and Jack's Jesus. got 18. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, speaking of rarefied air, congratulations to Domingo Roman for throwing a perfect game that I think four people in the world got to watch live, unfortunately. Number one, he did it in Oakland in front of 11 people. And of course, you know, the game's on starts at 930 East Coast time. So not a lot of people were watching it here, but it was awesome. I got home from a baseball game that I was with with Jonah. We got home at like 1030. By the time I got into bed, it was like 11. I put it on. It was a sixth inning, no hit. I'm like, oh, well, let me just sit, make sure. By the ninth inning, I was like, fucking keep my eyes open like this. But it was pretty cool to watch. I mean, it's when that guy, when it, when you watch a, a pitcher pitch a no hitter, it's they have so many pitches working for them that it's like fun to actually watch everything that happens. Got lucky a couple times, had a three and one count. The guy fouled off uh, a really good pitcher's pitch, which probably would have been called a strike. And he swung at ball four and grounded it out to Josh Donaldson. That was really the only big thing that was like, ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fun to watch. And so just hope he can make the fucking playoffs. And Aaron Judge doesn't – He's. I mean, this toe is – It's such a – like a like perfect like scenario for us to get fucked. The only – like any other – like the big toe on your pivot foot when you're a six foot seven, 280-pound person. Is a pretty important fucking toe, and that's the one that's smashed. So we'll see what happens. But all right, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> you did Talked good, Steve. Up. You did good. We got it all together, dude. We know yeah. that the uh, that we're never going to fix the entertainment industry. No. We're just at you know at the mercy of the uh, of the fucking 
you know, the, the folks in charge. Um, we talked about Brittany Mahomes and her mental problems and her, the Jackson Mahomes. And, uh, yeah, we got everything else done, too. And Kirk Cousins. So we're good. And All we're right. Like, we're like a month and a half away from uh, starting fantasy football. Yeah, so we'll uh, we got to get the thing together. We got to get the band back together. You got to defend your title. Have you started research and stuff? Oh, Steve, I started the day after the Super Bowl. I've got my you know notes. I, like. I already I already know what teams I like and who I'm targeting. Like I'm I'm ready to go. You know who I like? Pacheco. It's a good name to keep out there, folks. Keep that on your radar. <laughs> Um, by the way, we're going to end on this. There's a guy that put it like a $10 bet on all six division winning teams in NMLB right now with their odds. So I think if it ends up, he can win like $1.6 million or something on like that. $10? I don't know what the original number was. Could but have something... been t- what book would, would, <laughs> what book would take that bet? Dude, the Cincinnati Reds are in first place. Uh, the Florida Marlins, or did he? Well, who are the teams yeah. that are? Because no one saw Cincinnati, Florida playing Florida, well. Florida and and Arizona at one time. Yeah, I think Ar- the Arizona out west, and then you got um, Tampa. Who the fuck's winning the Central? I can't even tell you. Is the a terrible Is it Minnesota? Team. It might be, and then the West right now at that time was uh, the was the Angels, I think. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll see though. But it's a fun one to watch. Um and Ellie, speaking of uh, Cincinnati, Ellie De La Cruz is sick. Have you seen any highlights of this? I mean, how could you have missed them? Yeah. Fifteen games, hits for the cycle, has a freak of an arm, and feels first a second, third, and home on two pitches. What does he sound like? Kermit the Frog? Does he have a Kermit the Frog voice too? Probably. Hey, it's Patrick Mahomes and uh, Garrett Cole podcast. <laughs> High voice with Garrett Cole and, and Patrick Mahomes. Um, all right. That's the podcast for this week, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. And uh, go fuck yourselves. Bye. Go Bills. Go Bills. Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Welcome back. 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 Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy.